All right, man. We're live. It's me and Surrey here. What's up, bro? How's it going? Good, good. It's good to have you on here tonight. Yeah, man, I love to be here. This is a late night chat after our first meeting here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which went pretty good. It is. And I, was, I think it's a whole atmosphere of chats with the power of God. Yeah, so it's really going good. Amazing things are happening in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So, man, we were talking about before we went on the air um my my trip to Taiwan and I was talking about the intercession mm-hmm. that broke out and like how it's been you know it was just really really strong but then you came at me with this story about when you were younger and this was like happened in India like once you I, I want the people to hear about this it's so incredible well many years back um, you know my friends from uh, Tulsa Oklahoma husband and wife, Linda and her husband, they came to uh, meet with me to India. They asked me to travel with them. I said, I cannot because I was busy. And uh, they they came back. They finished the trip. They came back to Bombay. And they wanted me to come and meet because they had a friend, a man of God, wanted to meet with me. A pastor wanted to meet with me from America. So, well, I came to Bombay, and uh, I was staying in some other place, and they asked me to come and meet me, meet him in the hotel. So some reason, I could not make it until 7 in the evening. So, like, how many years ago was this? I mean, this is, like, 20 years ago? Yes, it's, uh, it's been 20 years now. Wow. Uh, maybe a bit more than 20 years. And I was stuck in the train station, and, uh, you know, devil wanted to stop me, eh? And that was the last day I was supposed to meet him. I, I thought I'm not, going to, I'm not going to meet with him. So finally it was from morning, 10 o'clock. I've been trying to go there. It's just a half an hour drive. I was stuck. Then finally 7 o'clock in the evening, I was able to go. Then they were still waiting for me. So when I went to the hotel room, my friend Linda takes me into this pastor's room, hotel room, and she said, this is pastor, this is Suri. You know, this. Then I went inside and I looked at him. I said, hello. Then he never responded to me. He was sitting on his bed, looking at my face. Then I walked a few more steps. I said, hello. Then he never responded to me, but he kept looking into my eyes, staring at me. I was a bit worried. Then finally he stood up and he began to come closer to me. And when he came, he started crying so loud. He started weeping. I was really worried. I don't know what's going on here. Why this man is crying? Then as soon as he came and touched me, I was zapped. As if like thousands of old electricity flowing into my body. So like the power of God just hit you like the moment like you came, came close to him then? Yes, he, he just touched me a little bit. And you never met this guy before? You just... Never seen him, never met him. Wow. And this guy was so tall and big. You know, Before I hit the ground, he just held me. I was like hanging like a baby in his hand. Then I was like, you know, I, and he started weeping. And the same anointing came upon me. I started weeping. I was crying and crying nonstop for 15 minutes. And he slowly laid me down, then I was taken up in the spirit, and I went and met. Now, had you ever been in the spirit before this point? Like, was this one of the first times you were in the spirit? I mean, I know some of your story about, you know, you growing, growing up and stuff and, like, really going after, like, praying in the spirit and things like that, but was this the first time you were, like, physically caught up in heaven, or, or was this... Well, I had some experiences, but uh, this was one more big step in my life. It happened pretty deep experience. So you would call this like a transcendent experience? Exactly, that you had, yes. Like a life changing experience for exactly, your ministry yes. and life. Wow, okay. Yeah. Then uh, when, when, when I was like totally out of my body, then I was, I met this man of God, T.L. Osborne. He was still alive that day, that, those days. And uh, I met William Branham. The both of them, they said, you're going to do similar kind of ministry in coming days. Wow. 
then I was I was back again, and that time this pastor came to know that I was so touched by the deeply touched by the Holy Spirit. He wanted me to lay hands upon him, and anyway, then that same anointing which was upon this man it started coming on me. He it stayed upon me many years. Then, you know, when I got up, and this man said. God sent me to India to anoint three people in India. He went around all over India looking for like a three people. He found two, but he was so disappointed. He was thinking that he never met the third person. Then when he prayed for me, he knew that I was the third person. Then he told me, God has sent me. Then when I looked at him that time, his face I remembered 12 months earlier I had seen this visitation I had from God and I see this there's so many people standing and this man comes there and he picks me up and he said come over here so you had seen this man in a visitation now and, you're like actually having the experience face to face with him yes and that was 12 this is 12 months later 12 months so later so first time in the spirit you'd seen him and now here he is like the actual guy and you're you're seeing him that's that's incredible yeah Go it ahead. is yeah it is you know so i was so shocked because i seen this guy exactly 12 months earlier in the spirit then he he touches me in the spirit the same experience what i had after 12 months the same thing is repeated in naturally so that time my life got so changed i went into deep deep intercession then that really helped me to tap into that did you ever find out who this guy was you know it was like i don't know who the man this wow. man was yeah wow that's amazing it's amazing yeah yeah because i i've always known you to be a man of prayer like yeah um, well i heard uh you know just like i heard a little bit about him later on you know this man he used to teach the people how to raise the dead wow and maybe he must have raised the dead i don't know about much about him you know, but he was so much into that, raising the dead. So I never met him afterwards, never again. Just so, that one day. Just one day, that's and it. And that pretty much shifted you, like. Exactly, wow. yes, that was amazing. And so and so after that, you really, like, started, like, going into deep intercession. Yes, it, it took me much, much deeper, like, in the hours and hours, I would pray, and the God's love came upon me. The compassion of God came upon me mm. when he prayed instantly. Wow. You know, I, I never used to cry like that. But I, I would cry and pray for the people, intercede, and things would change instantly. Yeah, I feel almost like, and you may agree with me on this, I, I feel like intercession in 21st century is like a lost art. Like exactly. there isn't, I mean, obviously there's prayer meetings that go on. But what you're talking about is a deeper realm of the spirit, of the compassion exactly, of Jesus. Yes. Uh -huh. And I also feel like, uh, at least in my own life, and I, I think that you'll probably agree with this, um, when that kind of intercession comes on you, there's something that is birthed out of you, like it, it, supernatural ministry comes out of these times of intercession, I believe. Oh, yes. It, it is amazing. You know, there's certain times, you know, I, I've seen... Um, uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon me even now. It's in a different, uh, different measures. Of Holy Spirit comes upon me. Uh, other day, uh, maybe a year ago, I was sitting in the living room and you know watching television along with my children, just laughing. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit hit me, and I started laughing. I started speaking in tongues. I wanted to stop speaking in tongues. I could not. Like a minute, I would stop. Then I would pick up again the 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 craziest language I spoke that night my kids my wife was laughing at me because the words the coming out of my mouth was so crazy wow I never heard those kind of sounds you know I'm by myself like thinking what I'm talking you know it's the Holy Spirit to call me guess what I could not sleep that night until five in the morning Wow, so you were up all night. All night. Mm. Wow. Then 5 o'clock, 
I just like, forced myself, went and lie down. The next thing, I was in the spirit. So you went and laid down. Yes. But you went into the spirit instead of falling asleep. Yes. Just for those that are listening, you instead of falling into like beta sleep like de- deep sleep you you went more into like a trance room exactly wow then guess what, what does happened? that happen often to you well whenever the special occasions the holy spirit you know takes me into this realm you know it's before that you know he touches me so deep you know like i i feel that there's something god wants me to do then if i obey then you know it, it happens yeah and I, you know i also feel like too like intercession isn't something that is like learned. Like yes. I know you can go to like you can read people's books on intercession, but I also feel like number one is the impartation, and then secondly is the yielding of the spirit. Exactly. You know I don't think you can teach yielding of the spirit really. I mean oh. you could tell people like yield to the <laughs> yeah. spirit, but you have to learn yourself. You know, yeah, it's the opening of the heart exactly. and the trusting of God that yes. allows you to go into those deep realms. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And now do you find it like when you travel into other nations, like you will have intercession like hit you for those regions that you're going into before you minister? Like, I mean, y- you pray and everything for the meetings, but what I'm saying is that do you find that like, say God sends you to a certain country um, do you find intercession comes on you stronger for that nation? Like when you're there, before you're there, like, you know, how, how does that all work with you? Well, yeah, it it's happens like, you know, suddenly I feel burdened to pray for the nation. When I begin to pray and begin to cry for that, then God begin to show me the picture. This the last trip of mine, and God showed me that I need to go urgently to India. I go every year. But my focus was on only a few places, but I never shifted for years. But God began to tell me, now you go to the places where I send you. So I had to choose what God wanted me to go. Then, then the Holy Spirit prepared me to pray, and you know, God showed me there's something what kind of demons are coming against me? God showed me. I had to. So you kind of see like the principalities, the exactly, powers yes, yeah. in the second heavens yes. over regions. Yes. When you go there and you start to pray, you start to intercede. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And so that you see like a breakthrough in the meetings. Yeah. Even many times, you know, when before I go, they try to come against me. I know already what kind of demon is there. Wow. You know, what what kind of you know thing is like in the ruling. Uh, as a principality, the ruler who who is there, you know, I already know. When I go go there physically, then I will see some of those idols in the pictures. What I am already seen in the spirit. Wow! And so that's like discerning a spirit, exactly. Like First Corinthians chapter twelve. Now, do you remember the time that 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 came upon you? Because you you just talked about this intercession that you remember when that depth of intercession came on you. Yes. Now, do you think that that came that the the discerning of spirits that gift came out of that, or do you remember a distinct time in your life in ministry when that really began to operate? Because there's a little bit of a difference between just like someone that says, you know oh, I feel that there's darkness here. Yeah. And then the operation of the discerning of spirits where you're actually going into the spirit. Exactly. And you're seeing the princes, you're seeing the powers that are resting over regions. And I think like the modern day Christian really doesn't understand. They'll just say, well, I operate in discerning of spirits. You know, I, I feel like, you know, this little area over here is like spooky or something. Yeah. That's not what you're talking no, about. No, you're no. talking about going in the spirit. You actually see like princes, powers, thrones, demon forces. Exactly. And, the, and that kind of thing. So it's like a visionary realm that you go into. That's right. I don't, I don't intend to do that. But as the Holy Spirit, you know, he prepares me. He already knows. God already knows what kind of demons are there. And when when the demon suspects that the man of God is coming, you know, they are in trouble. That's why they try to oppose me before I go there. So they try their best, you know, 
So then God shows me and also under the Spirit, when you're under the anointing, under the glory of God, you're able to bind those demons. It's not like, you know, nowadays people, you know, it's, it's ma- they made it like a habit. You know, every meeting they try to bind some demons. It's, uh, it doesn't work like that. Unless the Spirit of God takes you into the spiritual realm in a particular time, then you bind them, that's done, done work. Then that place is yours. You know, bind, bind the strong man, then that place is yours. And you go and bring the gospel. Wow. Yeah. So you do the work before you even go to the exactly. service. Exactly. You know, See, a lot of people don't understand that, yeah. that most of the work, yes. the, it takes place in prayer before the meeting. Yes. So that when you step into the meeting, the supernatural just kind of happens. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that's what, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, I, I feel the pain, what the people go through, you know, uh, this time it, it's like, it used to happen previously, but this time it was intense. Now, I did not know, like, you know, I think I asked you also to pray for me. You know, it was like heavy, heavy it was, you know, because the Bible says one will put thousand to fly, two will put 10,000 to fly. It is always good to have a body of Christ around you. You know, that's why it's good to have two or three people, like, you know, connected when you're traveling. Even in the spirit, is going to help you a lot. So I felt the pain of the people. I didn't understand. It was like, you know, almost like I was sick all through the time. And when I go there, like, you know, unbelievable things happen, miracles after miracles, like crazy miracles, like in the tumor is the blind saw, deaf heard, you know, the the broken bones, like, you know, instantly got healed. Wow. Yeah, yeah and, and and I've seen, like, you know, you, you have signs of wonders, too. I mean, you get yeah. people that get gold teeth. Yes. You've seen gold dust. I mean. Yes. Um, and that all flows out of the intercession that you do before the meetings. Yes. I, I believe. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, is that kind of how it works for you? Yeah, I think this, this is all added blessing, you know. So um, I believe it starts, like, you know, the earlier you asked me a question about the discerning and the intercession. There are two different things. Right. In the discerning of the spirits is just a gift, and it, it started operating earlier. And of course, you know, when I start praying in the spirit, you know, the praying in the spirit really helps you. It actually drags you into all the arenas and different places like a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, miracles, you know, discerning. It takes you in different directions. So it is very, very important to go to the roots, like the compassion. With the compassion, when you begin to pray for the people, God knows that you you are interested in them, like how Jesus was moved with compassion. The same compassion is expecting us to have that upon the people. So when you have the compassion and when you begin to put yourself, you know, and with the concern when you begin to pray for them, these gifts begin to operate by themselves. Yeah, it's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I was just with um, James Maloney. You know uh-huh. James? Yes. And um, he was talking about the compassion of Jesus. Wow. And he was saying to me, we were sitting at a dinner table, and he was, he was kind of talking to me about miracle ministry. Uh-huh. And he said, the most important thing you can do is pray for the person that's in front of you or and also love them. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, if you're just trying to get a miracle to happen, typically you're probably not going to see it. But if the compassion of Jesus moves upon your heart, then you're going to begin to see something supernatural take place, uh, I, you know, in the midst of the people. But he was like, focus on the person that's in front of you and love them. You yeah, know? yeah, it, it is. Uh, can I tell you one more example? You know, yeah, it, it also happened many years back when I came uh, to Pittsburgh. You know, after I got married, so I was. Um, uh, we were in the friend's house. Uh, my, my wife was sleeping on the bed. You know, I was sitting on the next to the bed. I was just inter- having intercession, praying and praying. It was. It crossed two a.m. in the morning. I was still praying. Then uh, I was like sitting on the chair, tired of sitting there. I thought, okay, let me lie down. As soon as I lie down on the bed, the Holy Spirit hit me again. The next thing I knew was I saw the roof opened up, the place where I was lying down. The roof opened up. I was, it's almost like a hole in the roof. And I was sucked, sucked out of that hole 
went out. Now, now, are you are you laying on your bed when this happens yes. with your eyes open, or are your eyes closed and now you're in a trance and it and and and, and your roof leaves? Or uh, take me through that. How did that? Well, I was still awake. I was you were still, awake. Your I was eyes still open. Awake. That was crazy. Boom. Yeah. So open eyed vision with open eyes vision. You know, wow. just like I was seeing that. You know, open eyes. I'm seeing that roof opening up. Then I was just sucked out. You know, when I went out. The next thing I see, the Pittsburgh in the night, you know, I was flying and I, I look, it looks so beautiful in the night, whole city, downtown, I, I begin to fly over the downtown. I so your spirit was flying over Pittsburgh, exactly. Pennsylvania. So you're taking, in the realm of the spirit, you're yes. actually taking the air. Yeah. The second heavens. Exactly. When wow. I was flying, I saw a beautiful thing, you know, I enjoyed that for in a few seconds, a minute, I don't know, like, you know, it took a little bit of time. Then afterwards, super fast. Uh, God took me so fast on the other side of the world. I don't know which country it was. It was like very poor nation. It was like combination of Africans and Indians, like, you know, they looked very different. Mm. But it was all in the mountains and jungles, you know, that kind of area. And... Um, the Holy Spirit brought me there, and he, I was I landed there. It was it was maybe around ten o'clock in the morning, looked like that, you know. But here it was after two a.m. when I left my room. So I see I landed there. Then the Holy Spirit prompted me to walk towards the huts. There were some huts, the small little huts. The poor people lived there. When I was walking, I saw this lady and the daughter, they were walking together. Then they saw me, they shocked. They asked, who are you? You know, then I stood still, and you know, I was about to talk to them. When I was about to talk to them, you know, then the words came out of my mouth. I said, I came to tell about Jesus. Jesus loves you. That's what I said, you know, I was thinking something, but the words came out of my mouth, exactly what the, God wanted me to say. Then when I said that, I see Jesus coming and standing next to them. Then I started weeping because I saw Jesus came there, stood with that woman and the daughter. Then he had a, almost like a prayer shawl. He had covered on his head and also part of his face was covered. He just opened up and he looked into my eyes and smiled. It, the love of Christ went into my heart. I started weeping so badly, you know, so deep. Then the lady and the daughter are shocked, you know, why are you crying? I said, look at Jesus standing next to you. He's saying that he loves you. He's saying he loves you. When I began to say that, their heart began to melt. They began to understand the love of Christ. They, they received Jesus. Then the Holy Spirit told me, your job is done. Then I began to walk back from where I came, then again the Holy Spirit took me, brought me back to Pittsburgh. Wow. It was amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Have you had that happen to you like other times as well, like similar kind of occasions where you were taking places like that in the spirit? Yes. Because it felt like that was probably your spirit man traveling to that actual place. Yes. Um, kind of like Philip did. Yes. Or, or like uh, Ezekiel was caught up the hand of the Lord came upon him, lifted him up, and took him places. Yes, um, that's that's phenomenal, and and ministering to those people. But what I found really great about it was Jesus was there. Yeah, Jesus was there, man. I cannot forget that. Yeah. So uh, I know how he looks. You know, it's not like the paintings what we see here. You know, he looks so different. You know, he's very healthy, and he's like looks like exactly 33, th th between 30 and 33 years old. Wow. In a very strong build. He, he, he's not having a long beard. You know, he doesn't have that, you know, mm. so, but he has a beard and, you know, longer hair, but not like what we see on the paintings. Yeah. It looks very different. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's so it's cool. amazing, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I remember um, uh, the, that one time we were in India together. This is how I know <laughs> that you actually pray late at night is because yeah, is. we have a mutual friend yeah. 
who you were rooming with. That's we, right. We were doing this trip to India for those that you're listening right now. And um, we had this other friend of ours that was, he was asleep in his bed. Yes. And he woke up to um, a, a person standing at the foot of his bed and he thought it was an angel. Yes. Which he thought this was going to be, you know, a, a, an incredible moment in his life. It was going to change forever. And, um, and so he, he, he did, jumped and knelt down on the bed. Did he jump? He jumped down. So, yeah. he, so I wasn't there. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. heard about this. Yeah. So, so tell. He so was tell lying down. He did not know that I was standing up, you know, next to his bed and lifting my arms and praying. So this is like three o'clock in the yeah, morning. That's right. In the hotel room. Yes. You're praying like you always do. Yes. And he didn't and, know that. I he would didn't do that. know that. But he woke up and yeah. he just sees this being at the end of his bed and he That's jumps right. out of the bed and you know he kneels down and he started you know worshiping then uh, afterwards he realized that's me standing there then he he told me that he, he thought he saw an angel wow yeah. so he thought you were the angel yeah, that was right. coming to like anoint yeah yeah that's whole, that's yeah. that's great man yeah. that's great yeah so uh man yeah. That I, I never will forget that story because I remember the next day we, we were at breakfast and he told me that and I yeah. thought <laughs> this story is never going to go away. I this know. is always one of those stories that you're going to always tell the rest of your life because he's sitting there, you know, could you imagine you're sitting, you're in the middle of the night, you, this is your first time really rooming with yes. with you. So he doesn't know that you're going to be, you usually pray all night. And he he thinks you're sleeping, and there's a being at the end of his bed, and That's he thinks right. this is like, you know, anointing time. Yes, and uh, he figures out that it's you. That's that's just so great, man. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, so what's your favorite Indian food? I mean, we know that you. I mean, you're an Indian connoisseur, you know, as far yeah. as like the Indian food. So what yeah. what what what's your favorite like kind of food? Well, it depends upon. Who makes it? Okay, there are certain places like uh, I like. One of the favorite thing I do like is biryani. So lamb biryani, chicken. Yeah, what, lamb, one? lamb biryani is really good. Man, that is yeah. good, isn't it? Yeah. But you gotta have the right person that makes exactly. it. Exactly. You know. Yeah. This, because it, it it has a lot of spices, and it's a process. You know, you cannot just like mix it with the rice and meat. Mm. It's a process. I, I see the white light just passing just now. Yeah, while we're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's because the angels like biryani. Yeah, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're excited that we're talking about Indian food. Yeah. Oh man! So, uh, you know, I was in uh, the UAE and I was with some some people from Kerala. Yes. And the Indian food's a little bit different. Yes. I mean, are you from Kerala or where? No, what, what part? Well, I'm from Karnataka state. Okay. And Kerala is a neighboring state. You know, they every state has a different flavor. They make it differently. Okay. So, and if you eat in in Karnataka, you don't want to eat in Kerala. Really? So what? Why? Yeah, because you know they use a different spices and it smells differently, tastes differently. Okay. So what's the difference in the taste? Because all all I felt like of the Kerala food was it was just I felt like my face was gonna burn off. I mean, <laughs> I felt like the whole, like. It was the holy fire, but it wasn't really holy. It was just hot. Yeah, it's hot. Everything is hot. And Indian food is hot. Yeah. And particular place like Andhra Pradesh, you know, like Hyderabad and different places, they they more spicier than we. And everything what they eat is very, very spicy. Wow. Yeah. So, and Kerala is okay. You know, we can manage that. But the they, they spice is a bit different. Mm. They usually, for every food, they use a coconut. You know, that's one of the main ingredients in them. Wow. So they use coconut and everything. Yeah. Man, so, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, where, where's the best Indian food that you've ever ate? Like, is it in India or did you? is there somewhere that you've been where you're like, man, these guys can really cook some good Indian? Food? Well, in, in India, like, you know, there are a couple of places I do in Hubli and Bangalore. You know, they, they, we get a very good biryani there, lamb biryani. And Dubai. Dubai, there are a few places out there really really good 
brand you'll get it mm. yeah it's really nice have you ever been to the uk and ate the ate the, the curry there yeah I, i ate a lot of curry in the uk and it's it's not the authentic indian food you know they the name is indian food but it's right. like you know it's like they made it like for white people right they, they 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 sugared it up for, exactly for, yeah. the, for yeah. us yeah i get it, it it's not authentic yes wow wow yeah. i uh I've ate some good Indian food and I've had some bad Indian food. Yeah. Yeah. But um, there's one place here, if you like to, you can have some. In, in, Pittsburgh. in, in Pittsburgh? Yeah. And it's authentic? You think it's like the, uh, the it's real It's like deal? close. You know, it's close. Yeah. It's really pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Good. Yeah. Nice. We can get something tomorrow evening if you want to. We'll try it out. Yeah. yeah. We'll try it out. Yeah. So you, you've been, you know, traveling in and out of India pretty much your, your whole life. Yes. And doing crusades there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've seen, I mean, India is, ex- is really extreme place in the sense of it's so, to me, when I went there with you, because you mm-hmm. brought me there, uh, it's so different. Um, you know, the poverty is different, but the demonic is different. Oh, yeah. I mean, I saw things like there that I had never seen, you know, in, 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 even in Africa, I'd never seen that. So, I mean, what, what are some of the things that you've seen, you know, over the years that are just like, because I've seen some wild things. Even when I was with you, I remember we were in one church in Bangalore. And oh, yeah. one of the, ch- like, we were seeing some, some pretty incredible <laughs> yeah. miracles. Mm-hmm. But... Um, some of the like the children and stuff, this like you know, the mutilation of the body and like yeah. the twisting of stuff. Yes. And, like, can you can you talk about that a little bit? Well, there are places where you see um, a lot of poverty, and also there are places like people are very rich, especially in the city. If you go in the city area, you'll be see a lot of people are. They're very well to do. They have a lot of money. The people don't have money. They don't go to the doctors because they don't have money. So we see a lot of people like you know who are not really taken care. You know, many many times we see the twisted arms. You know, the big heads and you know, uh, terrible physical stuff. You condition. just wouldn't see here yeah, in exactly, the states. Yes. Like you wouldn't even get to pray for this kind of stuff. We've never seen in America yeah, exactly. It's either put away from away from people, yeah. or you know, it just doesn't. It, it just yeah. you don't really ever see that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, and and also another side, you know, there are places like you know, there's heavily, uh, you know, it, it's heavy because of witchcraft. You know, so much witchcraft. This so can I let, let me ask you something? Okay. Do you do you feel like and I want to tie this into kind of the principality and power thing? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like a lot of that? is is connected with principalities and powers and the worship of um like entities you know like uh, of for of other gods and things like that that causes manifestations like that i mean obviously we i mean there there's kind of there's satanic worship there's witchcraft there's things that happen here in america yes um but There is, there are places like in Africa, for instance, yeah. like um, uh, Togo and Benin, like Benin. Benin is the actual womb of voodoo. I okay. mean, that's where wow. it originated from. Wow. So you'll see things that are there that, you know, will blow your mind as far as like levels of the occult and witchcraft, mm-hmm. even upon the people and the oppression. Yes. Do you feel like because of the um, idol worship in India for so many years, that womb has been open yes. to It, the supernatural, exactly. which goes both ways, actually, if we were to be honest. I mean, there are so many thousands of wonderful Christians in India as well. Yes, yes. Uh, well, you know, just a little bit complicated with the, the idol worship. You know, there are demons, like, you know, the, the, the some of the times— You see these strong goals in, in the demons, which are like a principalities, are these fallen gods. And you know, those, these people worship them as, as their gods. 
you know, I seen them. You know, though they are, they made the idols. What they look like, you know, in the, in the idol. When you see the idol in the temple, exactly the same way they appear in the spirit. In the spirit. In the yes, spirit. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. Yeah. They come and, and though I don't, if I didn't go to the place, I see them already. Then if I go and look around, the same demons, what I already seen, I see them. Okay, this is one part of that because they worship those gods. They're blinded, you know, those principalities, those demons are taken control over them. When you go there and preach, you know, they provoke other people. You know, then you will have a problem. If you already deal with them before you go, then it's, for you it's easy. Then you can go and deal with the people and you see the miracles happening. You know, that, that's one part of that. Another part is because the Hindu uh, religion and, you know, it's, if we, it's also connected to the witchcraft. You know, now they understand, some of the people understand witchcraft is more, is a demon worship. They know that. Even idol is also demon, but they, they differentiate like that. Mm. So they go into the witchcraft, and now uh, if I tell you the story of the village we went many years back, so we knew that this place was heavily, like, you know, you know what, in witchcraft and voodoo. You're talking about, like, in you know, Africa, you know, it's, it's kind of the similar kind of thing. You know, they do the idols, you know, like the doll, they take the doll, and, you know, they... And they demonize those dolls. Even the dolls walk and go into the houses and kill the people. Yeah, you know, like that. They, they actually killed the whole village. You know, we did not know the, this this village where we're going is really terrible, horrible, and you know, it's full of demons. We did not know that. So, but we went there and we prayed three days fasting. I took fifteen people with me. Strong man. Is this you and your wife, or uh, no? I was not this married. This was yet. before you were married. Ex exactly, I was not married. So we prayed, fasted. You know, I was praying hours together. You know, when I went there, every day, you know, I would they would give me the microphone around seven thirty in the evening. Like as soon as I take the microphone, demons start manifest. They would fall and scream. As soon as I go on the stage. Wow, as soon as you showed up. Yes. As yeah. soon as you got up to just to, yeah. just to, you the, start to minister, didn't yeah. even say anything in the mic, the demons just yeah, start Yeah, they, they begin to manifest. They begin to fall, you know, then like crazy. Everything goes crazy. Wow. And uh, then when I pray for them, you know, half the crowd will fall down manifesting and the demons leave. Mm. And it happened three days. And the last day, the Holy Spirit took over we did not know what we were doing. I kept ministering. I was praying for the people. People were getting healed. And everybody was stuck on the ground. Nobody got up and went. Everybody was there. When I finished my meeting, it was 3.30 in the morning. And I tell you, the, the whole village was cleansed by the blood of Jesus. It was a, there was a curse on the whole village. People were not married. People were sick and no jobs, poor, and everything got changed. Immediately wow. after we left, people started getting married, they got the jobs, there were no roads, and government began to make roads, and people started coming and visiting me with the gifts. Wow. You know, there's some people who bring sheep and chicken, you know, because they... That was, like their, was, that was like their offering. Exactly, yeah. They're bringing and you and and that was like a cleansing of the land, really, because yeah, yeah. there was like a curse actually upon the land, yes, because of how much idol worship had been done there. Yeah, you know, the fear of God came upon them. You know, they were saying, you know, we kill the people with this witchcraft. You know, that we thought we were the great people here, but when you came, we were scared. They, they, that's that's what they said. We saw the fire over you. The whole stage was lit up with the fire. That's why they were stuck. They were so scared. They thought they were going to die. Wow, they saw their eyes were their yeah, eyes, their eyes opened. open. Yeah, we didn't know that. Wow. And uh, they were so scared, you know, then the, then everything got changed there. And you know the 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 village was so so blessed. The last day I told them everything what you do with this witchcraft, bring that here. They piled up the big big pile. We we made a campfire that night. 
Man, it, it was like almost like Acts of Apostles in the, in the like, Bible. That's like Acts 8, where like Philip goes yes. down to the city and preaches the gospel, yes. and then they bring all the idols and they burn them, yes. and there's joy in the city. Yeah. That's exactly Exactly like, happened. That's like Book of Acts. Yeah. Same thing happened there. Yeah, all kinds of miracles, I tell you. It's like, you know, it's amazing. You know, it's like a, if you go now, also there's a respect, and the people will just come to you. Everybody remembers me, man, yeah. and 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 it was just like a total cleansing of the land, demons leaving people, but also leaving off of the physical, yeah, like you know the soil of the land. Did, yes, did, did the people start to see like their produce change? Oh yeah, and their well, chickens and exactly everything, everything, everything got changed, man. Yeah. You know, wow, There's so much, so much they got blessed. Wow, yeah. Yeah, do, do you find also like where there is um, idol worship in general that there's extru- like there's a spirit of poverty oh, that yeah. rests over the area? Yeah. yeah, you know the, the different demons are there. You know they they if they, this these people follow them for sure. You know they're kind of bound with those certain kind of sicknesses. Certain kind of demons bring certain kind of poverty. You know like that. But there's also, they believe there's one God. They think they bring the blessing to them. You know, they have a lot of money coming in, but they do sacrifice, blood sacrifice to that God. Mm. So, which is not good. But, you know, the end is always bad. Whoever does that sacrifice for a season, they get a lot of money, but the family will be vanished. They've been dead. Hmm. You know, I heard so many stories like that. So that's why people are scared, you know, when uh, if they go through the wrong road, try to make money, then they know something is going to happen to their children. Uh, mainly, you know, they're mentally they're affected, you know, something like that, mm. you know, which is not good. Right, yeah. right. And, and do you, I know we were just saying it's different here in America, but do you feel like it's more hidden here in America? Yes, I mean, as far as the, there's things that are going on here where, the like, the land needs to be cleansed? Or how, how do you feel about that? Well, it's like uh, many people don't know they they are still have a lot of stuff going on in their lives. You know, they are, they are people, they don't know this is coming from demons. You know, they have a nightmare and demon, demons visit them. You know, sometimes they... People don't recognize, you know, they are operating with the demons, like familiar spirit. You know, they try to prophesy, give the word, but, you know, by their fruit, you will know them. Mm. You know, the source is different. So we need to be very careful nowadays, you know. So if, if somebody gives you a prophetic word and it doesn't mean, you know, that you don't know what where the word is coming from, you know. Because some of them, they know they operate in this, you know, the family spirits which they involved before, before they came to the Lord. You know, if they the life is not dedicated totally, 100%, there's still, there's some source they're attached to. You know, they still operate in that. But when they come to the presence of God, they cannot stand. Right. You know, they, they begin to manifest. See, I, I feel like a lot of millennials don't understand that or western christians as yes. well because coming from from a background of, in india like you've seen like you know gurus yes like uh sai baba you would know who he mm-hmm. is or 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 another like um somebody that's like a guru would be able to tell somebody's name would be able to tell, like, would be able to manifest things, but yeah. it's not coming from the source of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. It's coming from a familiar spirit. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, they, you can, you can hear them, you know, they, they can tell about you, you know, <laughs> but it, we should know that we need to immediately stop that because, uh, you know, the Bible talks about it, you know, they were, God didn't, God hated the, those kind of people. Mm. You know, they because they they're not they they because their hearts are far away from God. You know, they I don't know why they're stuck. You know, I, I see that so much in Germany. 
Oh man, like you know, the the so-called prophets and prophetesses, even the pastors. You know, one time I uh, went to this church, and there there were people there. Oh man, half of the crowd was possessed by the demons. Wow! And the the pastor, you know, that day, the Lord has visited me. That day, I was praying and praying. God had given me a special visitation that day when I went there. I tell you how the crowd was manifesting. The demon possessed began to scream out when I went in the meeting. They were saying, "We want to go. We want to go." Before I casted out the demons, then I just said, "Go." Then they fell down and demons left. That kind of powerful meeting it was. Guess what? What happened? The pastor could not stand next to me. He started manifesting. He Man. ran away from me. Man, because he knew that you know he's going to be exposed. Yeah. yeah, Germany is an interesting place. Yeah, oh man, that's I a, I, rem- I mean, because of what happened there in World War II with Hitler and all the occultic activity that yeah. was there, um, I was shocked when I first went there and started ministering um, at some of like the things that would happen, not just in my meetings, but like in my hotel rooms and stuff. I, I remember like, <laughs> it's crazy. I was laying on my bed and this, in the spirit, this giant snake came into my room. Oh yeah. And I was like, whoa, what is that? And the, and, and the Lord told me that it's a spirit of deception. Yes. It's a Leviathan spirit that twists oh, the yeah. truth. Exactly. And I was like, whoa. And so I had to rebuke it. And many, many, many things. You could just kind of tell over certain regions and areas that um, there's certain powers. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, like when the Lord reveals it to you, you yeah. have the, that's like exactly. the Lord's showing you to take authority over it, you know, so that that's awesome that God would show us that because he's wanting us to go there and deliver and, and set the captives free. Yeah, my, my advice is don't run behind the demons. Don't keep looking for them. You know, unless God shows you, you know, it, it is it, it's not right because, you know, you need God. You need God and his guidance. You know, it's not like his, you know, I know that God has given us a power and authority. We don't need to be scared for the demons, but that doesn't mean that you should run. Some people try to go and search for them, look for them. What kind of demons are they? You know, that's that's not right. Right. You know, the, unless the Holy Spirit shows you, you know, this is not your job. Your job is to be enjoying the presence of God. Yeah, you know? so you're not saying go out and look for the demons. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the best books written on that subject is uh, John Paul Jackson's book, uh, Needless Casualties of War. Okay. Um, and he talks about people that just went after powers and things like that, that uh, they had never, um, they were never shown by God to take them on. And just come some of the things that kind yeah. of happened, um, but I was going to ask you too um, concerning witchcraft in 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 this in this kind of thing since we're on this subject, um, drawing the line between compassion in Christ and dealing with someone that is operating the occult. Um, I kind of want to preface this with a story and get get your thought on it. So um, I had heard a story about a bishop named Benson Idahosa. Yes, you probably you know heard who about he him. Is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was from West Africa, and he was on a TV program with a witch that was the head warlock of the entire West Africa. Mm-hmm. And the warlock told him that he was going to come to his city, which was Benin City. He said, we're going to do a, um, a witch's covenant conference. Mm. I didn't, you know, Christians do conferences. Yes. Witches and warlocks do, like, conferences. Yes. So, um, so he tells the guy, he says, if you come to my city, you'll die. And the witch was like, while we're coming to your city, and he said, the moment you get off the plane, you're gonna die. You're gonna drop dead, and because the Bible says, "Suffer not a witch to live." Yes, and so he said he. And then Benson challenged him on television. 
he said, curse my, curse my Jesus right now, and I promise that you'll, you'll die. And the witch was like, no, I'm going to bring 10,000 witches to your, to your city, mm -hmm. and we're going to do this big thing, seance thing or whatever. We're going to take over your city. So um, the, the plane lands like a week later, and the guy steps off the plane. The moment that his foot touches the ground, he drops over dead. Wow. And as a result of that, a major revival hits Benin City. Wow. Because that man, you know, you know, died. And mm. and the Bible says, um, when when uh, Paul was going into play into a certain place, that he was opposed by a sorcerer. Yes. And he said, "You'll be struck blind for yes. a season." Mm -hmm. So where do you stand on the compassion of Jesus versus like the judgment of God upon someone that's operating the cult? I mean, I kind of can know where I do, but I just want to hear where where you stand. Well. I I feel there are people innocently got into the trap of the witchcraft. There are people who practice witchcraft, they they still get saved. But there are some adamant and uh, stubborn witches, though they know God is real, they still want to stand against him. You know, such people, you know, I believe there's a time that they will face, you know, if, if there's a genuine man of God who carries this authority and power, they cannot stand against them. You know, I seen witches coming in my meetings, like directly try to curse, but they could not stand because of the p fire of God, which I carry, you know. So I believe in one day, almost like I told the people, you know, you will, something will happen you know for example i was uh, preaching in hamburg and there are two we, satanists came and sat one on each side towards the end i knew exactly uh, the, the spirit of god showed me those satanists come and sitting there as soon as they came they started chanting something the worship team could not worship they were totally struggling then my turn came, they announced I'm going to preach, and I knew that. So I took the microphone, I just felt from the Holy Spirit to warn them. I told them, there are two Satanists sitting here towards the end. You know, I don't know what's going to happen to you. Either you repent and sit here or run away from this place. So I know for sure if they tried to do something, they would have been dead by that night. I knew such a such a clear voice of God I heard, God's judgment would come upon them. But not every time, but particularly that day, I, I told them, you know, I'm carrying this God's presence. If God, if something happens to you, I'm not responsible. You may fall dead, I don't, I don't care for that. So you better repent and sit and listen to me. If not, you need to leave. Instantly, both of them what God, who God showed they ran away, literally ran away from the room. Man. Was, yeah. They stood up and left. Yes, they left. They got they scared. Knew. They knew. They knew. Yeah, I, I, I uh, had heard a story from uh, David Hogan. He told me that um, a, a warlock had came against his family, mm -hmm. and he started praying and fasting, and the warlock actually died. Wow. But when he died, um, he was going to hell and God told him to repent, and and if he did, he would be saved. So he ended up getting saved. Like he asked God to forgive him, and God brought him back into his body. Wow! And then he ended up being a Christian and being a pastor, which is incredible. Wow! No, I, I totally. So believe. that's the power of yeah, redemption. Yeah. But exactly. you know, in the in in the West, we have such this. I mean, not everywhere, but there are uh, there is like this little like section of of Christians that are like, well, we just got to love the love love everybody. And I'm like, well, you got to draw the line somewhere because you got to protect people. Exactly. You know, I I, I was in Louisiana, la I think it was last year, and I did a similar thing that you did because I oh, saw wow. I knew a witch was in the meeting and uh she and and I said you you've brought 
uh, an object into this meeting. Wow. And and if you don't repent, like you won't you won't make it out. Wow. And I was calling for her to come to the front to repent right then, but mm-hmm. she like they wouldn't. So then after the meeting is over with, this lady comes up to me and she's got like tears in her eyes. And she had a witch's ball. Wow. That she had came to catch spirits as I was casting them out that night. So that's she, crazy. It is that's crazy, good. right? So she 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 said, Please, you know, ask God not to not to kill me. Wow. You know, and um, I took the witch's ball and they they know the power of God. Yeah. They know the power of God. But it's a, such a lie, you know, the, you know, the, the, it's a kind of fear. You know, the the people are so scared, you know, because of witches, you know, what they do. And uh, I know this uh, recently uh, young lady was working in the hospital and uh, they they made this young lady, Christian lady, to do this and do that. They gave her her job and she began to be sick. Then she said, I can't do anymore. Then they forced her, if you don't listen to us, see what's going to happen to you. Then they, the witches cursed her. And immediately, instantly, this lady become very serious, physically. You know, that's real, I'm telling you. Because, you know, these people do not know the power of God, where they stand. You know, because of fear, we, if they don't know who they are, surely they, there's, there's a power there, evil power, try to attack them. But, you know, we need to know who we are in Jesus. You know, if we know that Jesus died for us and Jesus is in us and we are the temple of God and no devil can touch us. You know, that's what we need to know. You know, but um, uh, there, surely there's, there's, a, the, there's a thin line between the compassion as well as, you know, discern and speak the right thing in a different situation. You know, there are places like, you know, which, which is, you know, get saved because of the compassion of God. At the same time, they're, they're judged by God many times because they, we don't know like, you know, how long they are, they're stubborn, they, they're not listening to the Holy Spirit. You know, God will not simply judge everybody. You know, He will surely give them a chance. If they, I don't know how long they're stubborn, they didn't want to listen to God, the one day they are judged, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I, I cannot... I cannot really give much about it, you know. That's my thinking, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 you know, you can have a theology and a doctrine on things, but sometimes God will come and mess that all up. And, yeah, yeah. And so, and, and I think that it's always like on a case to case basis. Yeah. But I've just noticed that we sometimes extend an overwhelming like love towards something that we should really just be like no you know that could cause harm to the oh, yeah. to the body sure oh yeah you know if, if we know for sure in the spirit what you had to do you just you better follow that um, another story in germany uh when I, I was invited to this berlin meeting uh as soon as i went in the meeting i saw this one lady with the uh, uh, what is that um they take this cloth and you know dance um, uh, like a prayer shawl you know they okay yeah you know like a i don't know they different people uses that nowadays uh, it looked pretty good but the holy spirit told me she's a witch really yeah and she's right in the front of other other men and women there she's dancing and everything very clearly god told me then you know i told the leaders of that i said you, you need to check her out of the meeting. She come to deceive. No, 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 she goes to every meeting. Then I told them, I don't want her to be in my meeting. I don't want her to be there. So they didn't, didn't want to listen to me. Where the next day, she began to manifest. She started everything what I was preaching, she was talking against it. One day she came, when I was preaching, came, against me, she like demons began to manifest. She came right in front, tried to lay hands upon me. I held her hand. I looked into her eyes and she began to shake and shiver. Then, you know, she she was totally started opposing everything what I was doing. 
that the leader has to tell her to go away from that meeting. Wow. Yeah. They, you know, she began to manifest later. They be, she began to show up, you know, what the demons are inside, and then they began to come out. Man. Yeah. That's why. So we, we need to have the discerning for, you know, this is very, very important. Yeah, you don't want everybody laying hands on you. No, I, I don't allow anybody. Lay yeah, hands on no. no man suddenly. No. Yeah. no. You don't want to lay hands on them. Don't allow anybody to, you know, if you don't know them, don't stop them. Right, yeah. right. Man. This is, you know, this is, you know, it's, it's huge. You know, whatever we talk tonight is just a very little, but it is really big. Yeah, it's like a yeah. huge subject exactly. that you could just dive into so yeah, many, yeah. so many things, different but. little pieces of of, of um, the casting out of demons. Yeah, you know, this this is one side of that. Another side is the angels always helps you. Right. You know, we we didn't talk about the angels, but the angels always there. Yeah. You know, we we only talked about the bad thing. You know, but. To cast a bad thing, you know, there's some kind of good thing is behind Do it. Do you always find that angels are there, like, um, during a time of deliverance? Do you feel like the Lord sends angels? Yeah, surely. The, unless the, the angels are there, it's very difficult for you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a power, which the anointing which God has given you. But, you know, every word, what you speak, you know, he will fulfill his word with signs and wonders. You know, so that means every word when you speak, you're activating the angels. So angels are there to cast the demons out. They many times they 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 they, don't, they see the power. They see the angels. Even I see the angels. You know, mm -hmm. but there are particular times. You know, the the angels are like you know they activated. So many angels are there. When there are more angels around you, then the more quicker you see. The deliverances. Wow. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, in certain w in certain kind of cultures as well, like um, the supernatural is more readily accessible and talked about. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that the demonic in the West is is much more like it's more goofy. In the, in the sense of like they don't really know what they're talking about, yes. and then they never talk really about angels. Yes, when when they do talk about the demonic, it's always like in a weird weird way. Yes, like they have no power over it. Yes, and then when they never talk about angels ever. Mm -hmm. um, so, what are your thoughts on ministering with angels? I mean, is there is there something that the Lord has shown you uh, concerning like working with angels? Well, you know, when we, like, it's like the word, you know, every time the word is used by you, the 100% God is there and the angels are there, but you don't see them. It's a promise, God's promise that they are there. But when you begin to be obedient to the Spirit of God, that you'll see the more activities of the angels. And, you know, I heard... One time, uh, I think one of the Kenneth Hagin's teaching, and he said, if if you're obedient unto the Holy Spirit, you start seeing the angels. You start seeing Jesus Himself. You know, it, it's uh, it, it takes your obedience unto the Holy Spirit. Okay. So again, you know, that's a that, there's many years back I had an experience like you know I have a, I, I already told you that you know I like to pray in the night time. One particular day, I was so tired and I, I wanted to take a nap before I start praying. I slept, you know, then I got up. It was 2 a.m. in the morning. I Oh, I slept a lot and I need to pray now. So I was in India, you know, in my parents' house. So it, it was outskirts and it's a lonely house. So I just, I didn't, I never took a flashlight, nothing. It was so dark. I just went out, wanted to pray outside. I went on the road, maybe... I walked two or three minutes away from my home and it was very, very dark. You know, I could not see much. I was half asleep. Then I heard these steps following me. I turned back, there was nobody. You know, I could not see anybody. Then I walked a little further. I could hear very, very clearly somebody coming and tried to catch me. I got so scared. I wanted to scream and run back home. And then, like, it's such a fight. 
because it's I could hear that so clearly you know something you know demonic and you know something following me and such a fear came at the same time in my heart I'm trying to find God you know I so in between I'm fighting I had to make a decision I had to run or stand okay in the meantime I decided Lord he promised that you were with me I kept saying that so two or three times when I said that I began to feel the peace of God coming then I began to lift my arms and begin to worship God and I began to praise him thank you Lord for being with me but still the the fear was still operating but I forcing myself saying Lord he promised that you were with me mm. my attention went on the up on the clouds you know I began to look to the sky and I began to just praise him and and suddenly I began to see the cloud and and it's become colorful suddenly it's all become colorful with open eyes then I began to hear this music amazing and beautiful it's almost like thousands of little little bells are ringing together but like as if they are singing the beautiful song i cannot explain how it is it's such a beautiful song. was this like an angelic choir that you exactly were angelic choir like you know it's a beautiful beautiful like an, like a bells ringing but at the same time they're singing you know it's like a unbelievable sound it caught my attention and i was like looking at the sky because it's turning into colors different colors suddenly i saw it's like almost like the heaven was rent you know it's cut open i see this big giant coming down very fast he stood in front of me he was like a warrior like a giant angel giant angel 30 40 feet high wow. he stood in front of me is like a old warrior like you know so they they use this um, breastplate and he had a big sword and you know he had a metal skirt and when he came down the metal pieces which were hanging on his skirt was banging together i heard the sound it was so clear i'm standing in front of him then the holy spirit told me god spoke to me very very clearly i sent a michael angel to protect you and as soon as i heard i tell i i tell you that it's like thousands and thousands of old electricity flowing into my whole body then i i stood there it was around 2 a.m. in the morning i came when this experience like you know he imparted something something happened to me and i heard a voice from him you know about my ministry and my life got totally changed Mm. and when it was over it was 5 o'clock in the morning i was standing in one place it was amazing wow yeah from that time i start seeing the angels different kind of angels wow is amazing see i think that the that a miracle minister desperately needs to understand the working and administration of angels oh yes especially because Miracle ministry is often coupled with deliverance. Mm-hmm. And you need the angels to come and help you and also minister to you. And we see that in the Bible even when Jesus was tempted in in the wilderness 40 days for yes. with the with the devils. The Bible says the angels came, came and ministered to him. Yes. So, I feel like scripturally angels are sent to us to minister to exactly. us and you know obviously for us we can send them you know their their um ministering angels sent for the heirs of salvation yes not just two so we can we can release angels um you know i i recently had heard a a, st- a real a real good, like sad in my heart a, a kind of a sad story of an individual that uh we both we both would know um he um he had amazing miracle ministry mm-hmm. and he uh was going to well i i was in i was in Tulsa and i heard this they said that uh he he no longer remembers anything like he is like de- like dementia is what they oh, were saying like yeah. totally loss of memory doesn't know anything 
and and I was really kind of sad about it. So I called a friend of mine and I and I said, um, I said, hey, did you hear? You know, this certain mm. this minister is like has it has this issue, or whatever. And he and he he said to me, he said, well, he said, you know what happened? And I said, no. He said, well, he was going to Brazil, mm-hmm. and he was going and doing these miracle meetings, yes. and there were some amazing miracle meetings where kids that had club feet like yes. totally turned around feet were just straightening out yes and he said he had a a, a major warlock mm-hmm. came against him this was like two three years ago and and he the minister said that it was like a black film came down on him and he said he had told somebody about that that he had felt like something came on him, um, but they never really, they never really prayed it off or prayed oh. against, and so now he's in this situation. But I feel like um, the ministry of angels almost protects us against. Oh yeah, There's some, some things that we wouldn't even necessarily know that were there, because obviously the anointing, yes, is one thing, and. We're not discrediting the anointing or the gifts of the Spirit, but God does send his angels. Oh, yeah. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 91, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, he, he, he sends those angels so that we wouldn't even dash our foot against a stone. Yes. So there is a purpose in the angelic. Yes. And so um, without angels, we almost become susceptible to 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 different kinds of demonic attacks that were unnecessary yeah the angels are really important in our lives you know so we need to acknowledge them you know every every time you travel you know you need to you know we we, we cannot command them but you know i think we had to go through god you know when you you know just the word again you know just like you know we have to claim the word of God, what he promised to us, he will send his angels to protect us. He sent his angels. You know, when you see in the Bible, the different kinds of angels, like, you know, Gabriel angel brought the message. Michael angel is to fight, you know, like that. You know, the angels bring the gifts and, you know, the miracles and finances. You know, they're different jobs they do, but we need to get, you know, kind of, um, uh, familiar with those angelic visitations you know that's really fun it's really fun once you once you get along with them it's become a habit to you like an almost like they are there with you every day yeah yeah that, that's really fun and what you and what you focus on your you attracts to exactly you. exactly you know I think one of, one man of God says you know what do you respect that will come to you mm. you know what do you talk about more? You know, you are attracting that. You know, right? If you're talking more like tonight, we're talking so much about angels. You are attracting them. You know, they're happy. You know, they we are talking about them you know, yeah. because nobody talks about them. Right? You they're know? moving around. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, you know, when you speak about angel and angels can, you know, when you study out the scripture, you see that angels aren't all just look like you know men. There are some angels with like faces like lions. You know, eagles, oxes. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's creatures. Wow. You know, high dimensional, like angelic beings. Wow. In the spirit realm mm-hmm. that God has like given us. For example, Ezekiel. You know, he sees that you know this creature coming there. They have six wings, and you know the. Uh, the seraphims, you know, they, he's talking about. Mm. Yeah, they they are amazing creatures. Like you know, the the head up there was like ox and, and lion and man, and uh, the different kind of faces. You're right. What you're saying is, you know, angels are different. You know, I seen different kinds of angels. Yeah, I was going to ask yeah. you that. Have you ever seen anything in the spirit that you were just like, that thing is so ugly that only God could love it? Do you um, know what I mean? Like you're, I mean, in the sense of like. It's really like scary looking, and they're like, "Whoa, this thing! Like, what is this thing?" You know, uh, I know seen ugly kind of angels, but I seen hard looking person, like you know, 
strong personality, you know, rough face. Oh, okay. You know, kind of rough, you know, kind of, he's kind of boxer. He's going to beat somebody else. You know, if somebody tried to, you know, either come against him, you know, he'll beat you down, you know, something like that. Wow. I seen like that. Wow. But um, not really ugly, ugly, no. no. Wow. No. Yeah, I was because, you know, I always wondered what Ezekiel thought when he saw like the face of like this lion-like creature, this eagle, like four-faced creature that's like shape-shifting before him, you know. He's got to be like, wow, this is something I've never seen in the spirit. You but, know? but I've seen the horses, you know, the the horses, not the natural horses, they are from above. Like spiritual horses. Exactly. Okay. You know, horses and chariots, you know, they, they're, they're almost like they live, they they have a life inside, you know that kind of. They're thing. living. Like they're living. Living material. Yeah, even the chariots live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's uh, that's like crazy, you know. Mm. Yeah, that, that kind of thing I've seen, and um, uh, the different shapes, kind of thing, you know, seeing the faces. Yeah. You know, like a, um, like bright, you know, almost like a round, a star. I cannot exactly say that. Different shapes, not exactly like a human, and a bit different. Yeah, you know, they're like that. And and when you found out that you could travel in the spirit, mm-hmm. did, it, did it excite you, like in your prayer life? Because suddenly you knew that, wow, well, there's places that I can go in the spirit. It's so exciting, you know. Every time I God takes me, I love that experience, because you know. It's what you see, what God shows you, no doubt about it, 100%. If something God does through you, 100%, you can guarantee, you know, if, if you seen in that spirit, you get taken into some place, you prayed for somebody, people delivered, you'll exactly, it will happen after a few days or months, you'll, you'll go to the same place, exactly what you see, it happens. Wow. That's hundred wow. percent. Sometimes I seen beforehand, you know, the people coming and you know wanted for prayer. I already prayed for them. They delivered. So when I meet them physically, then it happens. I know hundred percent sure. Now, have you ever eaten eaten Indian food in the spirit? <laughs> uh, no, okay. not. Right. Yeah, I, I you know because I was just gonna. I was just thinking because like. Angel food. Have you ever ate like spiritual food before at all? Like in the in the, in the realm of the spirit? No, I didn't. But uh, I I was, uh, you know, whenever I had this encounters, you know, some anointing, you know, they anointed me with a couple of times. That time I was so refreshed. I felt like you know I was, like filled and fed. You know, just like extra energy. Yeah. You know? uh, there are certain times. You know, it's like now physically, if you ask me to do something. I cannot, but there are certain time when I come out of the anointing, I feel I can I can beat ten people easily. I you feel, just feel that strong. That strong, you know. I feel like I can lift the car. Wow. Yeah, I, you know, I should try one time. I literally feel. I feel like if I hit something like in a superhuman wall, might exactly, comes on you. Yeah, yeah. Wow, like yeah. superhuman energy yeah, just comes I, I all over. I literally me. feel, you know, if I hit the wall, I feel it's going to break in pieces. Wow. I feel that kind of energy, you know. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah it, it's uh, it happens many times. Mm. That's like uh, it, I don't know, like you know why it's like a because of you know I think God coming in that you know in that kind of um, visit me in that kind of supernatural dimension. Right. You know, I feel different way. You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I I always always fascinated with. The seventy elders that went up and with Moses and ate and drank with God, yeah, yeah, you know, like the spiritual food and what that would have done to their physical bodies, yeah, by eating and, and drinking in wow. the spirit, you know. We don't know, you know, God, whenever you're taken up in the spirit, you know that God is already doing that to us, right? Yeah. I mean, there's some kind of spiritual exchange that's yeah, happening. Yeah, surely 100 percent is happening, and uh, I think when we have that experience, we need to check medically. We need to check and see what is happening in our 
cells and you know like you know, in your physical body yeah, yeah. like go get checked out and see yeah, yeah. something's changing immediately changed. we should do that you know because it's something different you know it, it stays a few hours like that you know i feel you know like superhuman actually yeah, yeah. that's amazing yeah then you know during the time i don't get hungry i don't get tired mm. you know if i sleep 10 15 minutes i can survive next few days like that wow you know without sleeping you know, it's like that. But it, it's not every day. It's a certain time. Right. You know. Right. I always feel like even in a corporate meeting, if you can get people to just touch of that glory, they'll be healed. Oh, yeah. You know, their physical strength will, will, will re, you know, be revived. Um, the glory is, is so amazing in that it, it can literally change you physically. Wow. You know, yeah, that's where the signs and wonders happen, yeah, like yeah. gold teeth, weight loss, wow, man, the, hair comes back. I mean, scars vanish. That's that amazing. Kind of it, it happens so much in your ministry, you know, so this is amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, and, I mean, you've seen it all uh, yeah. over the world, too. I mean, interesting signs and wonders, you know. I think one of the things we're going to see is the revitality of the, of the human, like, uh, DNA. Because they've been in the glory. Yes. And that's the thing that I, I, I've been really like meditating on is that the 70 elders went up and ate and drank with the Lord. There had to have been a genetical trance like fusion mm -hmm. that happened with their cells. Oh, yeah. We know it happened to Moses because his face glowed. Oh, yes. His body didn't even rot. I mean, the Bible says that Satan went and tried to contend for that body. There's something that was oh, in yeah. the DNA or the bone structure of of Moses and contended for the body, yeah. which he didn't say the bones of Moses. He said the body of Moses. That means that Moses' body didn't deteriorate. No. Even though he'd been dead for years. Wow. So, I mean, even his skin cells wasn't, weren't like. No, no, I think there's something down. very special about Moses, I tell you, because yeah. of the glory he stayed in. Yeah. You know. And uh, then Moses showed up on the Mount of Transfiguration along with Elijah, and they yeah. hadn't dated, aged a day because they had been in the glory. Wow. So. Yeah, I, I totally believe that. You know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, because when I have these experiences, like, you know, the short period of time, like like superhuman, you know. I want that to stay on me, twenty four seven. How it could be, you know, that that will be so powerful. Yeah, See, just for just stay in, stay in like that. Yeah, but I think it is possible. But we need to train ourselves, you know, because like we switch back again to the natural, you know, dimension again when we are in a higher dimension, you know. So we get all these experiences, but we need to learn. I don't know. I believe that God's going to teach us someday to be in that level where Moses learned to be there. And I think God is teaching us, you know, in no period it's going to happen. Yeah, like yeah. entering into that, exactly. like that rest yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, the, where the glory yeah, is. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, sometimes I'm so surprised because the, the, the revelation of what we have and Kirby have and so many other men of God have, very similar, but in a different kind of revelations we come out with. Mm. different understanding you know we come up with you know we experience those in our life but it's almost similar very similar mm -hmm. you know like a, there's a time that you know that's your body won't decay you know like you know it, it stays fresh right you know because of the the DNA and things begin to change in our life because being with that caught up in the presence of God so much is going to transform yeah. the life. You know, this Bible very clearly says that, which is hidden. You know, you know, in, in, in John 8 chapter, it says that, you, you know, the, if you hear the word, it will not die. If you, if you die, also you'll still yeah. rise again. Yeah, you know, it's it. like crazy. Yeah. yeah, so even if you die, you're going to rise again. Yeah, yeah. Sheesh. Yeah, it's amazing. Very powerful. Yeah. yeah, powerful. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I mean, we're we're living in a generation where I believe that we'll we'll see that, you know. But it's staying in the glory, spending time and waiting upon God. Um 
that where we see that rejuvenation happen. That's why I loved what you were saying about the whole when you get out of the spirit, you feel this spirit of might on you because yeah, it's the yeah. energy uh, that Paul talks about, the superhuman energy that God mightily enkindles within him. Mm. So there's something happening to the f- cells of your body that you're taking to yeah. the presence of God on. Why don't you pray for the people tonight? Or sure, yeah. That are that are listening to the podcast. I, I know you carry a realm of impartation, mm. just the joy and 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 just the glory of God. Wow. Why don't, why don't you just pray for people that are listening Lord, right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship the Father. We love you, Jesus. Lord, your glory is present, the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. To everyone who are listening to us, oh Father, Lord. Oh, Father, through this airways, Father, Lord, let your anointing and the glory of the new dimension begin to touch them, oh, Father, Lord. Lord, let them begin to be transformed into the glory, from glory to glory. Let them be shifted, oh, God, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, God, thank you, Lord, for touching the eyes of the people. Oh, Father, God, the scales are falling down right now. Oh, Father God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. The supernatural power is flowing now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command every blindness, the scales to come out in the name of Jesus. Let them begin to see now. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, Father God. Every witchcraft be broken from the people who are listening to us now, Lord. Every oppression be broken now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The people who are having pain, in their necks, in their bodies, I command the pain to leave them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for the healing power flow into their bodies. Let them be healed now in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, your glory is coming down upon them, O oh Lord, like a river, like a cloud. Hallelujah. Oh, Rasando Bokura, Se Talabakura, Maseki Talabakuri, Baba. Hallelujah. <laughs> your, pr- <laughs> your presence is here, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. The spirit of fear be broken from them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the peace, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. Every tormentation is breaking down now. Mm. Hallelujah. The peace and the joy is coming upon you. Receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Father God, we talked so much about the angels. Oh, Father God, release those angels, oh God, into their houses. Lord, let them bring the miracles in their houses, oh God. I pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank for bringing those angels, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for touching them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, this is a time of harvest. Lord, you're bringing into us, oh, Father, Lord, the time of harvest is come. The people are going to be healed and touched and, uh, Lord, uh, receive the salvation all over the world, oh, God. I praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, you are touching the Hollywood also, Father. There's so many actors are going to be touched by the Lord in the next few months. Oh, Father God, the, the darkness which are holding them, this breaking off from them, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you. Hallelujah. Release the love of Christ into Hollywood, oh God. I praise you, God. The mercy of God flow there, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. Hallelujah. I see this cloud, hallelujah, going into these places. Hallelujah. Into I, I see this L.A. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, Lord. I see the angels are getting released there. Thank you, Father, Lord. I'm seeing that multitudes are getting touched by the Lord. I praise mm-hmm. you, Jesus. Their eyes are getting open. I can feel the anointing. Power is flowing now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. I praise you, Lord. Thank for the angels of God. Thank for the glory which is here, Father, Lord. You're manifesting your spirit of God upon them. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, oh, Father, I praise you. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Father. We praise you. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, I'm awesome. S- Amen. I see the bikers are getting touched by the Lord there. And bikers really, in L.A. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I love it. Come wow, on. Praise God. Amen. Man, that's awesome. Wow. Thank you for being on oh, with us tonight, sir. Amen. Praise God. It's so wonderful. And So uh, where can people get some of your materials from? I know you got a book. 
Yeah. Where, where can what's the name of your book and where the, can they get it? Yeah, it's um, the book is called Supernatural Keys to the Higher Dimension. You can go to Amazon.com. You can get it there, or you can go to a web page, LatterGlory.org. L A T T E R uh, Glory LatterGlory dot O R G. You can go there and you can find my audio book or e book, and it's very powerful. Your life will be changed. And the LatterGlory.org is your website as well. That's correct. Yes. And you're on Facebook. Yes, and yes, this Suri Devraj is on the Facebook. And you can go there also, you can find us. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks again for being on with us tonight. Thank you. Mm